The title of the article I'm discussing today is Endoscopic Raman Spectroscopy Enables Objective Diagnosis of Dysplasia in Barrett's Esophagus. This work has been undertaken as part of a long-term program of research with collaborative partners at the University of Cranfield, Bristol and Exeter. The development of dysplasia in Barrett signifies a significantly increased risk of developing esophageal adenocarcinoma. Patients must be accurately staged and treatment strategies individualised depending on the extent of disease. Dysplastic lesions and intramucosal cancers may now be treated endoscopically using a combination of endoscopic resection with both diagnostic and therapeutic intent, followed by whole segment ablation, most commonly RFA, to destroy any near plastic field change. Although most invasive cancers are readily diagnosed on endoscopy, dysplasia and T1A lesions can be extremely subtle or even macroscopically invisible, and as a result, clinicians may be faced with a situation where a patient has biopsy-proven dysplasia, which is not evident clinically on endoscopy, and therefore focal targeted endoscopic resection can't be offered. Similarly, there may be cases where random quadrantic biopsies may miss dysplastic lesions, even when they're taken in accordance with the Seattle biopsy protocol. For this reason, a number of techniques have been developed and tested in an effort to improve our detection of early Barrett's associated neoplasia. The ideal tool would be simple and quick to use, highly accurate and objective. It would also ideally enable distinction between low-grade dysplasia, which has a low malignant potential and so can be monitored, and high-grade dysplasia, which requires accurate staging and early endoscopic treatment. It would also seem logical that as clinicians gain increasing experience performing endoscopic resection, they should strive for complete excision of dysplastic lesions and intramucosal cancers, avoiding leaving behind residual disease whenever possible. An advanced endoscopic imaging tool could facilitate high-quality targeted endoscopic resection and potentially maximise R0 resection rates. Our study describes a novel fibre optic diagnostic tool which we're developing for application in the upper GI tract. We're aiming to translate a well-established analytical technique called Raman spectroscopy, which is used widely in analytical chemistry and has a variety of industrial applications, into an endoscopic tool for medical diagnosis. The technique uses a laser to excite biological tissue constituents, creating vibrations at a molecular level, which leads to inelastic scattering of the instant laser light. The pattern of the scattered light, which is recorded using a spectrometer, represents a unique biochemical fingerprint of the tissue being analysed. Previously published lab-based data has provided the foundation for this work after demonstrating the ability of a lab-based Raman spectrometer to correctly and objectively diagnose eight different esophageal tissue types, including non-dysplastic Barrett's, dysplasia, squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma. A multi-unit collaboration between physicists, clinicians and engineers has allowed us to follow up on these promising lab-based results by developing a specialised fibre optic Raman probe which has passed through the instrument channel of an endoscope and which has been optimised to interrogate the mucosa to a depth of just 150 microns to ensure the earliest epithelial changes are assessed in order to potentially enable objective grading of esophageal dysplasia. Ex vivo testing using clinically applicable one second measurements has demonstrated that the custom built Raman probe was able to differentiate high grade dysplasia and adenocarcinoma from low grade dysplasia and non dysplastic Barrett's with a sensitivity of 86% and a specificity of 88%. This data was based on measurements from 670 tissue samples correlated with consensus histology results following independent reporting by two nationally renowned expert pathologists. Diagnostic accuracies were generated using multivariate analyses and statistically cross-validated using leave one sample out cross-validation. We demonstrated the ability of the probe to detect epithelial disease, including its ability to objectively grade dysplasia and to discriminate intestinal metaplasia from cardiac and fundic metaplasia. The importance of this being that intestinal metaplasia, characterised histologically by goblet cells, has a greater malignant potential and in fact the presence of goblet cells are currently required for the diagnosis of Barrett's esophagus in the US. Diagnostic accuracies were shown to increase when consensus rather than single pathologist reporting was used as a gold standard for comparison. Buried cancerous cells were also detected beneath a histologically normal squamous epithelium suggesting potential for detection of buried glands following prior ablation therapy. 
Further analysis was undertaken to enable us to better understand the biochemical basis of diagnostic classification. Raman peaks corresponding with higher glycogen concentrations were seen in normal squamous epithelium compared to both Barrett's and neoplastic tissue, and nucleic acid and histone signatures were more prominent in the neoplastic tissue uh, than, than the Barrett's and the squamous tissue. And these are findings which are entirely consistent with previous in vitro biomolecular modelling studies. Our data has also been shown to be reproducible using multiple probes with no statistically significant interuser variation and with temporal stability over a 20-month period. Work has also demonstrated the potential for multimodality imaging with probe diagnosis clearly possible in conjunction with both narrowband imaging and high-resolution white light imaging. A limitation of this study is of course that spectra are required from ex vivo tissue samples but work is currently ongoing to enable a clinical trial of endoscopic Raman spectroscopy in patients with Barrett's esophagus. If successful, it's hoped that wider clinical implementation in tertiary units, which have the facilities for esophageal endoscopic resection, should be possible in the near future. In the field of Barrett's esophagus, translational scientists are striving to address some key issues. How can we improve our endoscopic detection of early neoplasia so that we minimise missed disease and facilitate high quality endoscopic therapy? How can we identify the small cohort of patients with non-dysplastic Barrett's or low-grade dysplasia who will progress to cancer from the vast majority who won't? And can we identify Barrett's or preferably dysplasia in asymptomatic patients? Endoscopic Raman spectroscopy as presented in our paper has shown considerable promise with regard to the first of these goals, but increasingly work is currently ongoing to evaluate the potential of Raman spectroscopy to risk stratify patients with non-dysplastic Barrett's based on objective molecular signals. This could perhaps facilitate a more aggressive individualised approach to endoscopic therapy in the future. In addition, it's hoped that lab-based Raman spectroscopy, perhaps allied to molecular techniques, could form the basis of a test to screen asymptomatic individuals. In summary, despite a variety of advanced endoscopic imaging tools currently available to clinicians, the detection of dysplastic lesions in the esophagus remains difficult and extremely subjective. Up to 57% of Barrett's associated dysplasia may be missed by standard biopsy protocols and high quality targeted endoscopic treatment is difficult. Endoscopic Raman spectroscopy is a highly sophisticated analytical technique which could provide rapid objective in vivo diagnosis of a range of esophageal pathologies without the need for staining or exogenous contrast. A Raman probe could be used to confirm dysplastic areas within Barrett segments and also could facilitate careful lesion margin assessment to ensure high quality endoscopic resections with clear margins.